Hello everyone, welcome back. Here it is, maybe the most requested video on this channel for the last few months. It's about my home studio and of course how I built it and soundproofed it and also how I treat it acoustically. Now, this is going to be a pretty long video, so I divide it into two parts, the soundproofing and construction and the acoustic treatment. And I understand for a lot of you the priority is the acoustic treatment because for the scope of your project, construction might not be an option. So if you are interested just in the acoustics, I keyed below in the timeline that section, so feel free to jump ahead. But I do suggest you watch the whole thing because in the construction part, you'll find a lot of answers to a lot of common questions and problems people face in their home studio. And so you'll find a lot of stuff that will save you time, money, and struggle. And in the acoustic treatment, I'm going to show you all the what, the how, and the why I did everything I did. And uh, so you can do it too and save a lot of money instead of going out and buying stuff, uh, you know, pre-made and also probably get better results. So without further ado, let's begin. So how did I end up building a professional studio in my house? Well, about 18 months ago, we moved to Madrid here in Spain and we bought a house in this beautiful, green, picturesque area of the city. And the only problem is though that the charm comes from these old houses. So when people come and buy a house, especially like us who bought from an original owner, they end up doing full renovations. And so, you know, when we decided to jump in and do the full renovation, then it made perfect sense to take the basement because we we're gonna tear everything down anyway and rebuild it properly. So we hired a company and who specializes in recording studios, concert halls, you know, and other acoustically sensitive places. I designed the dimensions, you know, everything like that. It's my design, but construction wise, I kind of defer to them. And so I'm going to talk to you about all that and of course about the treatment. So let's begin. So this is the basement as we found it when we bought the house. You can tell there's a big problem with humidity down there. You can see on the floor and on the, on the walls. And also it's much smaller than the room we ended up with because the full bathroom in the back and there's a little room with a washing machine, this big entrance to the garage. This was all taken down to make the studio larger. And uh, as you can tell from this other picture, there's a big window up there on the ceiling and that makes it perfect for a studio because it's really easy to treat acoustically. But at the same time, you can ventilate and you can have some natural light and it's actually much brighter than it looks in the picture. It really fills up the room quite a bit during the day. So it was the perfect place and uh, let's see what we did to it. So as you can tell, we tore everything down because even though there was some drywall and some rock wool here and there, it was really poorly placed, especially for a professional uh, situation. And so it was actually sometimes worse than nothing because everything was touching everything else. So vibrations were spreading like crazy through the house, up and down and to the sides. And so we tore everything down. And also we wanted to save as much space as possible because as you layer insulation, you know, it, it gets pretty thick really quickly. So we didn't want to lose too many centimeters there. And also we were able to gain some room by taking out the, the, the bathroom, of course, in the front. And also this little white area is the alcove where the uh, washing machine was. And the column now is freestanding, of course, because we moved the whole wall about a meter to the side. So this room became actually four by six, four something by six something. So it's pretty big and pretty large, which is important when it comes to treating it, as we'll see later. Then we begin construction. And as you can tell, there's a big canal there in the, on the floor because I didn't want any pipes in the ceiling. No pipes at all because they guaranteed that I wouldn't hear them, but I would hate to just be sitting here working, hear that, right? We had an issue with that actually that had to be fixed eventually, but this was one of the things I requested. So this is where the pipe went. And then you can see here the first material uh, it's called, I think it's called Propopren or something like that, but it's a thick foam, very heavy, very uh, dense, and it's uh, very good for impact noise, right? So this is the first layer we put down. And then on top of that, you can see this very thin gray uh, membrane. That's actually for the base, which is counterintuitive because usually base requires mass and thickness. But this, this is what they told me, is uh, for um, base. And then you can see you go up to the side of the walls. You don't just do the floor, you also do a little uh, side thing because you want all the construction to float so nothing touches anything else, right? So we're floating the room over this. But because of the humidity problem, we also had to uh, elevate the new floor over the old floor. So on top of this two membranes, we have these little black things. And so you, you have this stuff all over the floor and this, when you pour concrete on top of it, you build this net of air below your floor. And so humidity just travels through and evaporates and then goes out through two tubes that we have on each side of the room to the garage. So the air is always flowing underneath this final floor. All right, so this is what we did. 
And as you can tell now, there's concrete on top of it with the reinforced steel. And now we have a complete floor, right? So this still looks pretty rough, but it's getting better. At least now when I'm coming downstairs, I feel like we're making progress. You can also tell from this picture how much room we gained under the stairwell there. And that really made the room much more viable. And also the height was a concern to me because it was a very high room, high ceiling. But then as we built up the floor, as you can, you can see how many layers we put up, then I was concerned that we lose too much height, but we were able to actually uh, keep it very high. And that's very important when it comes to the acoustic response of uh, the room, as we'll see later. All right, so now we move on to the actual Soundproofing. This is the first material they put up. I don't know the name of this, but it's a very heavy rubbery uh, material. It's uh, drilled into the wall by using special screws made of plastic and they're all rubberized and the vibration doesn't transmit into the wall they're drilled into. And you can also tell that the front wall has this black thing and the back wall too, you can't see it in the picture, but the white wall to the side doesn't. And the reason is that the neighbors are on this side, front and back. But to the sides, we have the entrance to the house, which is a garden, a little garden. So it's basically earth down there. There's no, nobody to bother and nobody to bother me. So the treatment is a bit different, you know, also because we're saving money, but also saving space. We don't want to eat up too much space of the studio. And here we have the first layer of fiberglass. As you can tell, they're not regular fiberglass panels. You can see on the left side there in the bottom. There's fiberglass and it's glued on top of another layer of this rubbery uh, material so you peel it off and you kind of glue it on top of the previous um, material and this gives you a very dense very heavy and very insulated first layer for that wall and the back wall and it's really amazing how heavy this stuff is so you know mass is very important when it comes to soundproofing and so that's the first wall now here you can see the whole room and you can see the difference between the side walls the side walls is simply rock wool two layers and then we already built the frames for the drywall but of course there's going to be more stuff on top of this as well and in this picture you see the back wall which is treated exactly the same as the front wall i promise i was going to show you everything so here it is and the added difficulty of course is the stairwell and that pipe there that now instead of running through the ceiling it runs to the floor and then the column is getting the frame and uh, it has to be treated quite extensively actually more than i thought because columns seem to be a culprit of problems in studios and then on top of everything we put another layer of rock wool as you can see here and finally it's time to install the drywall so there's one layer of regular drywall it's nothing special i think but then before the second layer we have this membrane here again this acoustica thing it's uh, i don't know the brand but you have it right there danosa i don't know in your country but i'm sure you'll find something similar you put it there between the two layers of drywall to prevent any communication and the second layer of drywall which is this blue one is extremely heavy it's the heaviest thing i've ever seen and uh, three people had to hoist them up and uh, and mount them so that is to build mass which of course helps especially with bass frequencies and this is the whole room treated you know the walls no ceiling yet but all the walls and the column is done and uh, this was a pretty special day also in this picture you see the beginning of the insulation of the ceiling i'm sorry i don't have as many pictures of the ceiling but i'll talk you through it so we covered the whole thing with that which is very similar as the walls there's this rubbery material and then fiberglass on top and then the frame as you can see it's very tight because on top of this or below this there will be two layers of rock wool the drywall another membrane just as the walls and the really heavy drywall so this ceiling was very heavy needed quite a strong um, frame and also you see that everything is hung from these rubberized springy connections so any vibration from the room doesn't transmit to the floor above and vice versa so that was very important you can lose 90% of your work on a poor ceiling so these guys really did a good job and you thought it was done well no the floor needs some more treatment apparently after the first two layers the membrane the reinforced steel thing with the ventilation and the five centimeter concrete and now we need this because again this is for bass frequencies especially and so it's also been added to the mix and then on top of this there was another concrete pour which I didn't document and on top of that the final flooring so very very heavy i also wanted to make sure it was heavy because i wanted to prevent any boominess from the actual ventilation uh, setup we had so I'm, I'm glad to say it worked out very very well and after all that we had to just paint it and clean it a thousand times drag all the gear in put it together 
and I thought, wow, I'm almost done. And then I realized, wait a second, you still have to build all your acoustic treatment, which was actually the hardest part of the studio build and one I'm going to show you right now. Last summer, very shortly after moving to the new house, but many months before we started renovation work, I went to IKEA one day and saw these bookshelves on sale. And I looked at them for a while and then I said, I'm going to buy 13 of them. And that was the beginning of my, of a lot of my at least, uh, acoustic panels. So I'm going to show them to you right now and maybe you can do something similar, save a bunch of money and make it a bit easier than building them yourself. So these are the IKEA bookshelves. They're not available anymore, unfortunately, at IKEA, but you can find similar stuff anywhere. And these were actually great because they came in 24 centimeters deep uh, size, but they could also be modified such as this one to make them half of that. So for my first reflection points, such as that one, these are only 12 centimeters deep. It's more than enough for that and also in the back. But for the front where I wanted to have some place to absorb more of the bass frequencies as well and make it more broadband, I left it at 24 centimeters. I didn't mind losing a bit more on that dimension. And so these worked out very well. And then of course I covered them in uh, IKEA bed sheets, which were also on sale at the perfect color for the studio. And so I bought a bunch of them and double layered on these. So basically any panel you want to build, as long as you can breathe through the fabric, you'll be fine. And even if you put two layers, you won't miss a thing, right? And they will absorb whatever frequencies. So you see the thicker ones here on the left, they're 24 centimeters deep. I think I'm using 22 centimeters of rock wool. This lets your absorption go way low, right? For our broadband is pretty good. So these are great for panels and you can uh, put them up anywhere. They already come with a frame, so you can just hang them. I use the same L-shaped thing. They come with the IKEA furniture, so it's very easy. You just drill into the wall and hang them and just make sure they're proper for the weight of the panel, but you should be all right. One thing I always wanted in my new studio was a proper acoustic cloud. I never had one and I thought it would really make a big difference in the perception of sound here at the mixing position, and it does, it really does. And so I went out and I bought a bunch of wood with no idea what I was doing. And I think I started at 10.30 p.m. and I finished at 6 in the morning. It looks pretty bad here, but eventually, you know, I filled it up with rock wool. And this is about 16 centimeters of rock wool or 15. And then there's a gap of about 20 to the ceiling. And so this really makes it a broadband absorber. You know, you can get pretty low with this thickness and the gap. And so it's something you might want to consider. Usually you can get away with a smaller cloud, but really it's often suggested that you just make a bigger one from the back of the speakers and to behind you. So now I had all my panels in place, which by the way, I used the 70 kilogram per uh, cubic meter rock wool because on the first reflection points with thinner panels, you want some stronger, uh, denser um, rock wool, if you can. You know, it's not a huge difference, but it's better for absorption at certain frequencies. And then as you move into the base straps, you want to go lighter. So you can see here, I left all my corners open because the corner is really where you can tame the bane of all recording studios and especially home studios, which is the bass. The bass is a big problem, especially in smaller rooms. It really builds up and you can really tame it at the corners. And so as you can see here, I build these little frames again of wood. And these are what it's called a super chunk. Super chunks are basically corners filled with rock wool or, you know, insulation material. And so as you can see here, I built them up like that. And uh, basically you cut a, a, a big panel of rock wool, you cut it in half and then make triangles. And you basically just simply stuff it up with the rock wool. And uh, these are actually very big because they have 60 centimeters on the short side, which makes about, I think, 87 centimeters on the diagonal, which is pretty big and deep. And then some other ones on the ceiling that are a bit shorter, they're 60 something on the long side, which is still considerable. So I did all that and here you can see the studio as it were. I tested it and it sounded very different already. But then when I was able to put up the ceiling cloud, it really made a huge difference. And then again, it's all about uh, covering it up with fabric. In this case, again, the IKEA bed sheets work great. And then for aesthetic reasons, I just trimmed everything with wood. This is still early stages but it's getting better. The rock wool I use for the base traps, they're only 30 kilogram per cubic meter because you want the lighter stuff for the thicker uh, base traps. So that's something you want to keep in mind. 
And then uh, the people came in and measured it. They said it was sounding great. I still felt a little bit down at the 120, 140 hertz. I felt a little bit of reverberance there that I wasn't too thrilled about. So I looked around my house and I found these very thick, very strong moving boxes. And I filled them up with 30 kilogram uh, rock wool. I made a bunch of them, well, four of them, four big ones, and stuck them under my desk. And uh, basically floor to wall. And they made a great, great contribution to the bass traps. And now I'm actually, I, I wanted to add more, but I don't feel that I need them. So I'm going to stay with the room the way it is now for a few months and maybe mix a few songs and see where I need to go. But this is sounding already much better. And here's what the studio looks like today. It never finishes. It's always a work in progress, but it's a room where I can really sit here and be creative and work and hopefully make some good music. And here it is. I hope you enjoyed following along from destruction to the rebirth of this room. And also that you found all the tips on acoustic treatment useful for your own situation. Maybe we'll have to do a live stream on this so I can answer all your questions. But in the meantime, please feel free to ask your questions below in the comments and I'll be sure to do my best to help you out. As always, please like, subscribe, maybe spread the word about this channel if you could. It would be very much appreciated. But more importantly, I want to thank you for always being so kind and supportive and so inspiring with your questions and I look forward to making a lot more videos for you and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.